Okay. Lowering of vapor pressure, again, we were doing colligative properties. Basically, the properties that change or that depend mainly, mainly, that depend only on um, the number of particles that are there in the solvent. Okay, depend on how much of the solute you put in. The first one was relative lowering of vapor pressure. So vapor pressure, solvent is a liquid. Uska hamesha kuch na kuch vapor pressure hota hai. Once you add the so solute, uh, the vapor pressure decreases. So by how much it decreases, that depends on how much solute you add. Okay. So the formula that we discussed is ka was we're looking at by how much it is lowered. So we are focusing mainly on delta P. Uh, as always, if the subscript is one, that refers to the solvent. And if it is two, that refers to the, to the solute. So delta P one, by how much it is lowered relative to what was the original, uh, like if it was pure solvent, uska vapor pressure is directly proportional. So that's equal to the concentration of the solute. So if there is a solute, hai, matlab, zyada lowering of vapor pressure. If there is a solute, hai, matlab, it will be lowered by a small quantity only. Okay, so this is the relation. You're getting it back slightly, remembering things. Yes, so uh, amount of solvent, a uh, solute is directly proportional to lowering of vapor pressure. Yes. Okay, so that is only for solids and liquids, right? Huh, so this we are exclusively considering for non-volatile solute. So, if solute be volatile, hai, matlab, again, solute ka bhi kuch vapor pressure hoga, then you will have to get into Raoult's law of territory. Okay. Lowering of vapor pressure due to non volatile solute when you mix it in. Okay. Um, should we do one question? Wait, let me check. Yes, what if? So, it doesn't matter if the uh, solvent is volatile or non volatile. Solvent is anyway volatile. Agar uska vapor pressure hai, matlab, kuch evaporation to ho hai na. Isiliye you have that pressure in the vapor state. No, so, but some sol solvents, like the uh, volatility dif differs, right? Yes. So does that play a factor in lowering of vapor pressure or not really? Not really. Like, but the amount that it is lowered by only depends on the concentration. But obviously the final value, uh, like if you look at the absolute value, ki okay, solution ka vapor pressure kitna hoga, obviously solvent ka vapor pressure also plays a role in that. Okay, so like overall how much volatility the solution has after you dissolve, the, uh, like changes the vapor, vapor pressure. Yes, but the delta P, like by how much it is lowered, the difference depends only on the concentration of the solution. Ma'am, yeah. So, if it's if the solute is a um, liquid, can it be non-volatile? Non-volatile liquids do exist. So, then its vapor pressure is going to be extremely low. If it's very volatile, then it will have an extremely high vapor pressure. Again, it's not a black and white thing, right? Like so, like I'm asking, this is not exclusively for like solids and liquids, right? Vapor pressure is defined for liquids mainly because no, like the great. solute being the sol uh, solute being a solid. No, it's not exclusively for solids, but usually, yeah, like solids are not. Uh, okay, where is it? Lowering of vapor pressure related question, na? Think there. Some point boiling point. Okay, NCRT question. Let's see this last class. Uh, look at question number twenty-eight. 
So again, they're asking you for mass of the non-volatile solute. Uh, just ka molar mass hai this, which should be dissolved in this much of octane to reduce its vapor pressure to 80%. So three steps. Um, find out the mole fraction of the solute using the formula, lowering of vapor pressure ka. From that, find out um, the number of moles. And once you have the number of moles, figure out the mass. So how would you interpret the 80%? Like here, directly final vapor pressure nahi diya, lowering of vapor pressure bhi nahi diya. It's given as 80%. So do you know what values to put in? P naught is equal to. Who are already like uh, started to solve? Like this area already. Smera, I think you're doing it. Kaveri also solving. Arya, Sia, Sanskriti, you guys got it? No, I will put 28 one. 28, huh? Okay. Uh, see, we need to reduce octane ka vapor pressure to 80%. This is what it means. From hundred, we have to bring it down to 80. Correct. So, Delta P kitna hoga? 20. 20. Right. So if the actual pressure was 100, so for delta P 20 hoga. So delta P upon P naught is 20%. So 20 upon 100 will be equal to the number of moles of solute upon number of moles of solute plus number of moles of octane because that's our solvent. How 100? It's 114, right? 114 grams is the uh, given mass of octane. Oh, sorry, not vapor pressure. Yeah. yeah. So, number of moles solute, pata nahi, that's what we need to figure out. Um, so, get the mole fraction. So, once you have the mole fraction, uh, you can calculate number of moles of octane. This get... mole fraction of what? Octane. Of the solute. But how would you find that? You only have molar mass. You're also given a specific mass of octane, no? So you have the number of... And that's exactly what you need to find out. Calculate the mass of the non-volatile solute. How? So that's what? First, find out the mole fraction of the solute. 
that you'll get in terms of some variable because you don't have the number of moles. Yahan tak ye samajh mein aa gaya. This is what uh, this is the lower delta p upon p naught. We needed to reduce it by twenty percent. That is equal to mole fraction of the solute, which is total number of moles of the solute upon the total number of moles solute plus solvent yahan tak theek hai saveri arya okay now do we know the number of moles of solute we don't know that's what we need to find out so that once we have the number of moles we can calculate kitna mass chahiye because we have the molar mass so this is known isme we can use that formula also right the w m wala absolutely yes if you can directly apply it use that but otherwise yeah like get the number of moles and once you have the number of moles you can use that from w upon molar mass to get the mass could you write that formula down i don't recall that formula there's so many variables in that I have to check. M two is equal to M one W two. Uh, uh, upon W one multiplied like bracket. Usme P naught upon delta P one minus one. Yeah. Yahan pe hundred upon twenty aa jayega minus one and substitute the values. How would you find M one? We know W one 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 four. It's given fourteen. M one is given molar mass is forty grams. Ah, so in this uh, formula, haven't we neglected like n of ten in the denominator? I again, like as I said, like I I usually don't remember this formula because. It, that's a lot of variables, and the one and two confuse me personally. Uh, so I usually go by deriving it, like figure out the number of moles. Just say you get it easily. So, but it is it wrong to use it? Like we have neglected it for very dilute solutions. Acha. Then it's like it's not wrong. Let me see uh, the derivative. Should I try solving that? Neglected one. Uh, Would, What will uh, you take? N S in the denominator. It's just N of ten. So we neglect the number of moles of the solvent. Solute. Solute. In the in the denominator, like in the. Yeah, if it's an extremely dilute solution, it's like fifty five plus zero point one. You might as well take it as fifty five. That that's the thing. And by like, if we go by what you are doing, how do we find the mass of the solute? So it takes two steps. First, you check, uh, calculate the mass of the number of moles of the solute, and then in the second step, you do the uh, other thing. So mole fraction, say I only get the number of moles, right? Yes, uh, M two would be forty, right? Because M two is solute ka molar mass. Yeah. So what would M one? We need to find W two. This is the unknown. Yeah. Yeah, and W one would be one one four. M two, M one. What will you take? Obtain ka we'll have to find molar mass, na? No? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You guys, I hope you know the formula of octane. C eighteen, a C eight H eighteen. Its molar mass will be equal to. Uh, Ninety six plus eighteen. One one four. One one four. Oh, so direct one mole only. This is the one. 
सही है She has already calculated it. Okay, okay. Let me check. Yeah, I don't know if it's correct, but I use that formula, like the one given in school. Ha! Huh, like even if you use, like it's not correct or wrong. There'll just be a little bit of difference in terms of decimals, like. Um, I still don't know how to find mass of the solute. Uh, so yeah, I think you need to check. Arya got it. Uh, Kaveri, where are you stuck? What? Tell mass me. Mass of solute. No, mass of solute. I mean, like, okay, what all have you done so far? So we got one mole. That is the number of moles of the of octane. Mm. And okay. then what is Ns? So mole fraction is twenty by hundred. Is go simplify करके we get. Uh, let me just clear everything. Twenty eight कर रहे हैं ना okay. Okay. So twenty by one hundred is equal to the mole fraction of the solute. So mole fraction of solute, I got it as zero point two. Okay. Now what is mole fraction? The number of moles of the solute divided. Oh, got it, got it. Total. Oh, smera so get off by two grams. So take them. So that will be equal to uh, number of moles of solute we don't know divided by n plus one is equal to zero point two. N One by four, molar mass is forty, so mass will be equal to one by four. Uh, number of moles into this should be ten grams. See, and Smira, uh, what happened? I used that formula. That's why I think it's wrong because I neglected it, and this is not very dilute. So I'm using the other one. I I used the same formula. I got the right answer. No, I didn't use this formula. No, I used I, the W one one. I got. The no, I used one. this one. What is it? P not one minus P one by P not one is W two by M two divided by W one by M one. Yeah, listen. No, I used. Yeah. And we got it wrong, me and Smera. But you guys got very different answers. So, like, one of you got zero point one two, and the other got eight grams. So that's a lot of. I don't know. You use M two. जो लिखा था पहले वो वाला ना M two is equal to M one W one by. No, w1. I didn't use. Then, I use cool Kazi. Ja, ma'am gave for very dilute solution. Yeah, that that must be all of na. This is not very dilute. So. Like either Sia or Smera, can one of you guys tell me what formula you used so I can I can see kya hua? Like twenty upon hundred is equal to the mass of solute upon the uh, molar mass of solute. Like 
the unknown quantity upon 40, the whole upon 114 upon 114. The whole thing upon 114. Achha, uh, like basically one because 114 upon 114. Achha. W1 by M1. Yeah. Oh, so basically you ignored instead of taking total, you just took number of moles of solute upon number of moles of solvent directly. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, that, that's the case. Hmm. So that will work only if the number of moles of solvent is a lot greater than this thing. Like if you can neglect it. Yes, but anyhow, uh, like you, we should get 10 grams, no? At the end. Yeah, 10 grams. So see, yeah, now we got 9.91. Uh, did you like, did you use the formula? Like this formula or? I, uh, for the very dilute one, I, it, it, they had neglected that one, right? So I just added solvent calls, solute calls without neglecting. That's exactly what we did here. N divided by N plus. Yeah. Plus. Yeah. So here, exact, agya, 10 grams, like it, it was a very good, nice calculation. 9.91 kaise aya? Can you just uh, uh, take a picture of your working and send it? Yeah. Okay, Sanskriti Kaveri, where you guys at? Mom, I got the answer. I got it. Tabi clarity aya? Like, what did we do? How we approached it? Yeah, it's like a two level problem. Let me see. Okay, delta P upon P naught equal to, so 20 by 100 is equal to this by this. Okay. 115 kaise aya That's why that tiny amount of difference. Hmm. Wait. Yeah, found it. Why the issue? Okay. Okay, okay I got it. So let's do the other properties also then like all the numericals we can do it all at once otherwise we'll miss out on okay anyway that's relative lowering of vapor pressure numericals may again it's a case by case basis depending on how they've given it molarity molality in terms of mass in terms of percentage so that you need to just see be a little careful and do it okay next and um other effects are you have elevation and boiling point. Again, the colligative property here is the elevation part of it. By how much is the boiling point being raised? Okay, so the final boiling point will depend on the uh, solvent absolutely. If water is 100, then if it's raised by 0 0.2 degrees Celsius, it'll be 100.2 degrees Celsius. So that 0 0.2, 0 0.3 by how much it's raising alone depends on the number of solute particles. Okay. Um, 
so the can you repeat that the yeah. last yeah yeah that's what so elevation and boiling point again the difference in the boiling point is it raised by uh, 0 0.2 degrees celsius or is it raised by 0 0.3 degrees celsius that part alone depends on the number of solute particles in this case experimentally it was found out that it's directly proportional to the molality And the uh, formula, like the another constant is introduced when you remove the proportionality. So delta Tb, which is the change in boiling point. It is by how much the boiling point increased. It's the elevation in boiling point is equal to uh, Kb times M. Here Kb is a constant, uh, which is a property of the solvent. Uh, this has multiple names. One is the like boiling point ebullioscopic constant. Let's see other names. Molal elevation constant. Yes, molal boiling point elevation constant. Yeah, these are the two names. Basically, the constant that uh, plays a part in elevating the, like increasing the boiling point. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. So when solute is added, boiling point increases, and that difference in boiling point by how much it increases can be found out using this particular formula. Similarly, just like how the boiling point increases, um, it affects the freezing point also. The freezing point of the solvent falls. So depression in freezing point. So just like, like the same as elevation in boiling point, the difference delta Tf, depression in freezing point, is directly proportional to the molality. And the constant in this situation, Kf, is the cryoscopic constant. Yes, why only molality? So numerically, um, it was found out that it is directly like, so molality can be converted to molarity, mole fraction and other forms of concept. Yeah. But this one-to-one -one relation, like the proportionality, it was like a direct uh, correlation between, with, with molality. The depression in freezing point is directly proportional to the molarity. If you're taken molarity, then of course you'll have to deal with the density and all of those things in converting mass of the solvent to the volume of the solvent. So any other thing that conversion factor will be there. With molality, it's a direct relation. Yes, there was something that I said in class. I don't exactly remember with what relation it was. But she said that molality it does not depend on temperature. That is why we take molality, whereas molarity depends on temperature. So that's why. Absolutely. Uh, because so molality no, depends on the mass, na, so that would mass not change. Mass of solvent, not volume. Huh. So, volume will but, change. So, if we increase the temperature, mass, mass will not will, change, but volume yeah. will change. No, but okay, but how is that related to the increase in boiling point or decrease in freezing point? So these are not temperature changes, right? So when you're yes. changing, yeah, go ahead. Sia. Molality is usually preferred over molarity when we do any sort of calculation because it's not affected by temperature. We didn't say it specifically for this. Molality gives you a more accurate value but 
for the ease in in practical situations where the effect of temperature is negligible or if you're doing it at a constant temperature you end up using molarity because it's easier to measure the volume you can just put in a beaker and figure it out Uh, Kf and Kb again. Um, so these are constants that are that only depend on nature of the solvent. Uh, in detail, like to be more specific, they depend on the uh, enthalpy of change of the solvent. So the heat of fusion and heat of vaporization. So uske bhi, the derivation is not there, but the relation is there. So I'll just give you guys the formula. So Kb is equal to R into M, which is the molar mass into the boiling point square divided by 1000, because you want to take it in kg into- um, What is this? Delta height of vaporization. So this is a expression like a formula for calculating KB and you have a similar thing for KF. What is R? R is your universal gas constant. Again, both of them mirror each other. So I'll give you both the formulas and we'll look at each thing here. This is also- You need to remember this one. Yes, but the probability, like I've seen very few questions coming related to this. Questions mostly focus on the elevation and boiling point depression and freezing point. Okay. This is only if they ask us to find out the cryoscopic constant. Yeah, if you're given something related to delta H vaporization or delta H fusion, enthalpy of vaporization or enthalpy of fusion, then you look at this formula. Why this is what all was... multiple? One of you, yeah. Okay, Arya. Miss, what was uh, KF cryoscopic and what was the other? Um, Ebulioscopic. No, molar. Same point molar. depression constant. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sia, you were asking? Why is R multiplied there? Like, is it to convert something? No, it's not a conversion factor. So universal gas constant, it again, it's one of the universal constants, like right, like you have. Um, so that's a factor in a lot of like calculations. Even in well, when you're calculating Avogadro's number and things like that, R comes into the picture. So that will have to get into derivation of KB and KF, which I haven't looked up. If you're curious, I can look it up. I can send a link your way. I asked because in our school, uh, ma'am had given like the formula in that there was no R. That's why there was W2 and W1. But I think what your ma'am has given is extensions of this formula, yeah. delta TB, delta yeah. This is not yeah. the same. This is to find, see, if you observe the formula, let me look at each one. Here, we are not dealing with elevation and boiling point or depression freezing point. This is to find the KB or KF of a, a particular solvent. So here, R is the universal gas constant, the same R in PV equal to NRT. M1 is the molar mass. Upon 1000 is the conversion factor. You want it in KG. Yes? Yeah. If uh, this is generally for solutions having solid and liquid, why would we use gas constant? So again, uh, the universal gas constant, it's, it's a little more than that. It's not restricted only to uh, gases. Also- uh, And it's called gas constant? Because it was found out, it was figured out related to the gas laws, right? PV equal to NRT is the main thing. Yeah. So. Ma'am. Huh? With the depression, oh, sorry. 
with elevation and boiling point, the delta H will increase or decrease. Like the H, I mean, will increase or decrease. This one? Yeah. No, so like which one? Uh, KB, KB, voila. So H vapor pressure. KB will not change. It's a constant. No, no. The delta H vapor that huh? KB wale formula mein hai, huh? with the uh, in elevation and boiling point, H will increase or decrease. It will not change. Then why do we say delta H? Delta H is enthalpy of vaporization. Do you guys remember what is enthalpy? Yes, that's what I'm asking. Do we need to like yeah, so it will change, so, no? we need to provide no, it energy it, or... It's a constant value, it doesn't change with... Achha, oh. Okay. Huh. See, like in order to change one gram of um, water or let's one kg of water into steam, you'll need like a set amount of energy, right? Because you want to change those, like change the energy of individual particles there. Now, how do you give it the energy? You can give it by heating it directly. That's what you do when you boil like a container of water. Now, if you add a solute, um, in order to in order for the water particles specifically to get the same amount of energy, you need to give it more energy because the solute particles are also there, which is why the boiling point, the temperature that you measure at which that water is boiling becomes like it is increased. That is what is elevation and boiling point. But the amount of energy you're giving to individual water particles, which is delta H vaporization, will not change. This numerical value will remain the same. Just that how much you have to heat, like at what to what temperature do you need to heat in order for the water particles to get this energy is what is changing. So like it will be different for different solvents, right? Yes. Which is why KF, KB are um, characteristics of the particular solvent. Like what? This, this KF, KB has nothing to do with the equilibrium KB constants, right? No, equilibrium wala KB, that's KA, KB, that's like acid. Acid base. base. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so context matters. Variables, we end up using the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are like the main things. So this, even if you don't remember, no harm done. Uh, because it's there in your syllabus, I'm just giving you the formula. Focus more on getting this right. A uh, lot of numericals will focus only on this. Again, you won't, like, like you saw with lowering of vapor pressure, you won't get direct numericals. You'll be given concentration in terms of mass by mass percent. Uh, you'll be, you'll not be given mass of this thing. So you need to like convert it into moles, figure out the molality and like do all of those conversions. So yeah. So focus more on being uh, like solving problems related to these formulas. This is more important. Okay, and this, just in case you get theoretical question, like what does KFKB depend on? It's a characteristic of the solvent. It depends on the nature of the solvent, specifically the enthalpy of vaporization fusion of the solvent. Okay, so yeah. So let's do a couple of problems so you guys have an idea. Okay, and again, just like with vapor pressure, because you guys have that W1, W2 wala thing, it's a lot easier in this case because molality, so molality is weight of the solute, so W2, divided by the mass of the solvent. Um, no, number of moles of the solute, right? So you have W2 by M2 divided by W1. So just put that in this and you can get it in 2000 because you need it in kg. Yeah. So this would be the, just substitute it here in place of M. And you get the individual mass and all that.
you guys get this part understand why where this come came from so technically like delta tb becomes kb into w2 into 1000 divided by m2 into w1 aisa kuch ho jayega okay um let me know when you're ready to solve a question and then we'll do that Miss that uh, one you were saying for molality, you just, it's nothing new now. Like we have done same form. Yeah. Molality is what number of moles dissolved in a kg of the solvent. So I just put W1, W2 for that. Arya, Sia, Sanskriti, you guys ready? Yes, what was that? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Sia is still noting down or you finished? Done. Yeah. Okay. okay. Question number six. Pretty direct. Uh, Kf for water is 1.86 Kelvin kg per mole. If your R, whoever's automobile radiator holds one kg of water, how many grams of ethylene glycol? This is the formula must you add to get the freezing point of the solution lower to minus 2.8 degrees Celsius? Okay. Should we do it together first or are you guys feeling confident you can do it? Just can we try it first and then if we don't get it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. right, what is given first, say like asan ho jayega. Whatever numbers are given, just write assign variables. KF is given. Capital M W, like whatever it is, put it there. We need to find W one uh, W two, right? Hmm. What will be delta TF? What will be delta TF? 2.08 minus 0. 0.8 minus minus. Plus or minus. So delta TF is by how much is the freezing point reduced? So 0 minus of minus. Yes. So plus 2.8. Just remember, delta TF, delta TB, always in positive. So no confusion. If they don't give water as the solvent, they'll mention the freezing point, right, of this solvent? Yeah. But usually it's water only. More often than or, not. Or it'll be an organic like benzene. Like previous question, yeah. obtain the. Obtain the. Sanskriti doing? Yes, ma'am. Is how to? Uh, oh no, we'll have to convert Celsius to Kelvin. How to do that? This is Just a two question. Okay, delta T F. You did uh, zero minus of minus two point eight. We add two seventy three point five. 
Does 2.8 will be degree Celsius or Kelvin or does it not matter? Actually, before you proceed, like Kaveri, all of you, Delta TF 2.8, is it uh, degree Celsius, is it Kelvin or does it not matter? It should matter, right? Because it should be in Kelvin. Right, it shouldn't matter because it's the difference in temperature. So even if you convert it to Kelvin and then take the difference, you would still get, get the same difference. Yes, very good. Clear. So you need to convert Kelvin only if you're dealing with absolute temperature like minus 2.8, minus 40 degrees Celsius. But when it's delta of temperature, Celsius and Kelvin are, they have the same difference in units. So here it shouldn't matter. Ma'am, still for difference, like by how many Kelvin or by how many Celsius, so that would matter, right? Only in the case of Kelvin Celsius, it doesn't matter that, like that difference doesn't matter. So if there's some, uh, like if it's Fahrenheit, suppose that. Then it matters because difference of one degree Celsius is equal to 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. But in the case of Kelvin and Celsius, the difference in one cell, degree Celsius is equal to one Kelvin. Oh. Just that for Kelvin, you're shifting the scale all the way to minus 273.15 Celsius. So. Or Miss, I have another explanation could be if you die, if you convert, like if you make the take the difference already in Kelvin, but huh. if you take zero as minus 273 and you convert minus 2.8 into Kelvin and hmm. then take the difference, you would still get 2.8. Correct. The reason why that happens is because like conceptually uh, change of one degree Celsius is equal to change of one Kelvin. That's why. Miss, uh, in molality, mm -hmm. the thousand is only if it is in grams, right? Yeah, same doubt. So in this case, we don't have to make it into uh, thousand. Oh, sorry, it's maybe we need to do thousand. No, one kg diya hai na. So if you... And then if we use thousand in the formula, then we don't have to convert it, right? If you use thousand in the formula, like, W2 should be in grams. No, like T, uh, delta TF is equal to KF into W2 by W1 into 1000 by M2, right? W2 by W1 into 1000 by M2. So, is may, do we need to convert 1 kg to 1000? 1000 depends on the units of W1. So, if this is in grams, then 1000 should be there. If it is in kg, then no need of 1000. So we want it to be in kg. Yeah, because molality hai na, per kg of solvent. Okay, Smera and Arya have given, yes, both of you got the same answer. I'm hoping it's right. Kaveri also got it. Sia got slightly off. 
डेसिमल्स में डिफरेंस आया क्लोज इनफ Considering it's an MCQ, you you basically got the right answer. So Sanskriti, just waiting for your answer. Yeah. Actually, if I just did the calculation, see, I got the most accurate answer as per like putting the numbers in the head. संस्कृति क्या चल रहा है लाइक वट वेर आर यू एट मिस हाउ डिड वी गेट दी आंसर इन ग्राम्स बिकॉज नंबर ऑफ मोल्स यू बेसिकली डू दिस अपॉन दिस एज In in like if you use W two and M two both in grams. In ma'am, we wanted to be in kg. You only said so. How will we get that? W one you wanted in kg. So how can we take different units? Pura pure uh, numerical me. Sab kuch kg me kg what? Yeah. So how did we get grams? Moles is in grams na. But the rest is in kg na. Oh, so but the question only says how many by, grams? Yes, ma'am. But Kf का यूनिट क्या है के जी पर मोल सो केल्विन इज इक्वल टू केल्विन इंटू के जी डिवाइडेड बाय मोल के एफ इंटू मोलालिटी राइट हाउ डू लाइक वॉट आर दूनिट फॉर मोलालिटी मोल पर के जी Per kg. LHS, RHS are the units matching? What? What does that mean? Like, is the equation uh, correct? Like LHS or uh, see, units should match on both sides of the equation, right? Is that happening here? Yeah, uh, units. Kg, kg, and mole, mole. Yeah. You only remain with Kelvin. हाँ. Huh. अभी Kf Directly we took whatever was given. Yes, all the units are right. Delta T F also Kelvin we took it. Yeah, be right. Now this should be mole per kg. So the mole instead of taking directly in moles, we took it as W two by M two. How do you calculate number of moles? Given mass by molar mass. Given mass by molar mass, right? What are the units of given mass and molar mass? Grams. So we have here W two in grams, M two in grams. Per kg should be solvent, so W one should be in kg. If so kg for the so from, for the per kg of the um, Kf, we need to make the uh, W one wala into kg, and then that will get cut. Yeah. Um, All right, Sanskriti done. I'm on my second calculation. Then calculate, I mean, like what? What are you? What are you doing now? Did I'm you get the formula? That's how I calculated. Uh, okay. Ma'am, I have taken value of delta T F as two point eight. Huh? And uh, K F as one point eight six. Yes. Uh. W one is thousand grams. Okay. And M two is sixty two. One second. So delta T F two point eight equal to one point eight six, and then. Uh, uh, W one is thousand grams. Divided by thousand grams. Okay. Uh, M two I have taken sixty two. नीचे डोमिनेटर में न्यूमरेटर में इट्स डब्ल्यू टू इंटू थाउजेंड टू वन थाउजेंड 
ठीक है तो कर लो बस इसका कैलकुलेशन कैलकुलेशन प्रॉब्लम अरे टाइम नो जस्ट लाइक मल्टीप्लाई दिस डिवाइड दिस ये अभी के लिए यूज कैलकुलेटर सी व्हाट फाइनल आंसर क्या है बट numerical calculation this last step every single problem is going to have that you can't take so much time for this alone okay finish it send it we'll do one more question in the meantime okay rest of you look do number 9 sanskriti finish off uska calculation and then you also look at number 9 So it's more of an understanding related thing. So order of boiling points of four equimolar aqueous solutions. So concentration same here, but the boiling point ka order is C is highest, then B, then A, then D. The correct order of their freezing points is. Sanskriti, did you put it in a calculator? Send the number. Final answer. Do we need to find the relation between boiling point and freezing for this? No, you don't need it. Ninety-four, nine. Right? Close enough. You should get ninety-three point three three. Okay. Anyway, look at it later. So right now, look at question number nine. again it's more of a concept related the only thing like there's only two things you need to use in this that elevation and boiling point is directly proportional to the concentration and depression and freezing point is also directly proportional to the concentration so you need to use this or rather than concentration think of it as the number of particles how would we know we don't even know the sol the solutes c has already given an attempt okay arya also has given an attempt okay c i just see this is d is greater than c per C is less than B, but followed by A. Okay, you change your answer. Okay. Arya and C have attempted. Smera has given an answer. Okay. Guys, be careful. All of have we given the same or complete opposite? Arya and C have gave the same answer. Smera gave a different answer. Okay, look at it this way. Uh, order of boiling points, C is the lowest boiling point. मतलब elevation and boiling point, C का is the lowest. Like C increased by the smallest amount, right? That means depression and freezing point. Will C have the highest depression freezing point or the lowest depression in freezing point? Lowest, right? Because both are directly proportional to the number of particles. 
So I think you were. Could you repeat your question, ma'am? Your voice is cracking. So C has lowest, like C mix. C ka solution has the lowest boiling point, which means elevation in boiling point is lowest in C. Okay. So depression in freezing point. What can you say about depression in freezing point for C? Will be higher. Why? That will also be lower only. Huh? Like C will have the lowest uh, depression in freezing point. So if depression in freezing point is lowest in C, overall freezing point C will have the highest freezing point. Wait, I got confused. I thought you're asking the lowest freezing point will be of what? That will be C. Ah, the depression yeah. will be lower only. Huh. Yeah. Depression will be the lowest. So freezing point will be highest in C. So C where uh, the, like the freezing point is highest. So either it should be C or it should be D. Is it D? Take them. Uh, highest boiling point is for D, which means elevation in boiling point is highest in D. Malab, lowest uh, freezing point will be for D. Lowest freezing point for D. Then C. Yes. C is the correct option. C should be the answer. Wait, what? How? I guess. This go sign. Yeah, the sign is only ultra. Not even yeah. it, it was given in the question. Yeah, pe it says okay. Uh, D is greater no, than wow. A, greater than B. Ye to bilkul galat hai na? Why? Ma'am, it's given in the question only. That is the order. Wait, B should not. Let's check the solution. Look, we'll work it out, no? So, D but ma'am, it's not possible only because the signs are only ulta. See, yeah, the so same. Same. yeah, like it should yeah. be the same yeah. as the, should be the lowest freezing point followed by A, followed by B, followed by C. C should have the highest freezing point. This should be the order of freezing points. So, let's see here. D lowest A, mein hai, but like rest of it is not correct. Uh, in this case, no, D cannot be greater than C. This is also wrong. I think the options are only wrong. I think it should be C and with like the ulta sign. Because I give A, B, C. Between B and A. It has to be D with ulta sign. Na? Correct, yeah. Yeah, it should be D with ulta sign. It should be D with... No, see, yeah, it should be the same. It's the same. It's D with... Kisi ka phone hai kya wo? Oh, I thought it was yours. That's why I stopped. Mine, mine was mine. I can't. Okay. So, here, like C is highest. Okay. Uh, C is greater than A. C is already greater than A. Okay. Um, A is less than B. A is less than B. Okay. B is less than D. No, B is greater than D. B is greater than D. So, C is suiting all the things. Order ठीक है C में I still don't get it yeah I need to look at it individually in option C they're saying B should be greater than D B is greater than D B should be greater than A B is greater than A a should be less than C. A is less than C. So, matlab, the options are wrong, right? Kaise? This is the one this we feel like this one second. Like, now I'll give you my reasoning as to why I gave D, okay? So, you we know that uh, TB is directly proportional to number of particles. So, is TF, right? So delta, basically, delta, the, delta, yeah, delta TB, delta TF. So the order that will form for boiling point, the same order it will fo uh, follow for freezing point. If you see, uh, yeah. So 
Why not option D? I still don't get it. Shouldn't it be D with Us? opposite sign? Yeah, but here yeah. It, it like it should be D, but with opposite sign, no. So the option D as it is given is wrong. But if but you look all up, the options are technically wrong, right? Yeah, yes, all right. Yeah. Yeah. No, then. Why not C? Ma'am, how can if Miss, if you yes. changed is what's correct, then yeah, it's C. But then what is the C that is given is wrong. No, no it's not wrong. wrong. Look at how can signs, it be? No. I didn't look individually. Na, D is less than B in ours also, and in that also B is greater than A oh, in that. Like achha, that. Achha, got it. Got it. It's not increasing or decreasing order. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you can you like uh like go like what you've what you written? Can you go back to that? Oh yeah. So D is less than B and B is greater than um A and C. A. And, and, C. and A is lesser than C. But how can B be greater than Acha? Okay. Signs are very confusing. Just take compare the adjacent one. in this one second. Like C is highest, right? Unless we have the numbers, we can't say that for a fact. We just know the relative difference. Uh, ma'am, give given the boiling point, so from that we conclude, right, that the delta okay, is the yes. lowest. System. Yeah. So C would be highest. Yeah. Ha. Huh, based on this, yes. In this context, yes. So C will have highest. Freezing point, but subsequent boiling point. Huh. But now it's still confusing because okay, C is greater than A, understood. But and but B is also greater than A. So how would we conclude um, if B is greater or C is greater? Yeah, like the way it is given this here, is, we cannot conclude that. We cannot yeah. that the adjustment. But we know that C is highest, right? For this, in this situation, yes. Yes, so the right answer would be the way you have written, right? Yeah, I mean, technically correct because we already know this information, this would be the right answer, yeah. Why would they even give such an option? Yeah, that's so confusing. You say A, B, C, D, D. Like to be able to, but yeah, it's it's. If I was given such an option in the exam, I, that would be the first one I would discard because that would be the most unlikely. I wouldn't even think so much. I would just do D and move on to the next question. Mm, okay, Van Hoff factors and all we haven't done yet. Okay, this is another direct question. Be a nice thing. Calculate the freezing point. So here you have to calculate the freezing point. So first figure out delta Tf and uske baad, what is the T dash F? How would we find the uh, mass of glucose? Do you remember the formula for glucose? Yeah. Hello. No, not the molar mass, the, the W. Read the question. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Abhi, this is 250 grams, so we would take 1000, na?
Yes, what have you written? Uh, TF dash? Yeah. TF dash is the freezing point, like the revised freezing point. Okay. After finding delta TF, what to do? Find the revised freezing point. No, you know what is the normal freezing point of water. You figured out by how much it is reduced. Oh, yeah. It was a one-step thing. Yes, how very done. The sign is correct, right? Yeah. Uh, sign correct wrong, you need to give me the unit. I'll be able to decide. Smera, yes, uh, just check the last decimal, please. So some sort of calculation issue. That is close enough. Sanskrit, you shouldn't take so long for this because here the calculation is very simple. All the numbers are divisible. Asani say they get cut. See, Arya, it's not time to live. Smera, did you check your calculation again? Are your units? Yeah, ma'am. Um, I think mine came different because I took 0 0.33 instead of 0 0.333. Like in the moles, glucose. Ah, moles. Like don't uh, convert that to decimal. But wo division 1.86 is divisible hai wo, so it gets easy. Yeah, okay. Oh, Arya, wrong answer. See our units. If you are saying that's Kelvin, what is the freezing point of water in Kelvin? Also, Kelvin negative does not exist in reality. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yes, got it. It should be in degrees Celsius. No, then only it will be right. Yeah. Uh, Sanskriti, what's happening? Wait, so do we have to keep it in degrees Celsius or convert it to Kelvin? Whichever, but for the right, use the right units for the right numbers. Yeah. But how would we get Celsius if KF is in Kelvin? KF is in I use the wrong one. See, delta TF, you will get it in Kelvin, right? But considering is delta T. But Kelvin, the change, we take the same as for Celsius. So we can take zero degree Celsius as the freezing point. Yeah. Oh, okay. So again. Sanskriti, what is happening? You did you find out delta um, D? 
Yes, ma'am, I found that. After mm -hmm. that, I'm getting. How much did you get Delta TF? Ma'am, 2.48. 2.48, yes. So, Kelvin. But this because this is Delta, we can write it as 2.48 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, we need to find the freezing point of the solution. You know, it freezing point reduced by this much. What is the normal freezing point? Like without any solute. Water. What is the freezing point of water? Not four degrees. Zero degrees Celsius. So zero degrees Celsius tha. Lekin it reduced by this much. So the final freezing point will be zero minus two point four eight. Yes, zero minus two point four eight, which is minus two point four eight degrees Celsius. Yeah, cool. It is pretty simple. Uh, okay, this and all we'll this we'll do once we finish Van der Factor. This is an application of like depression and freezing point. So cold country, snowy areas. Uh, if you like, it's pretty dangerous to drive on snow. So when it snows, if you want to remove that snow from the roads, you like they add a whole lot of salt. Salt is anti-freezing. Yeah. So it lowers the melting point of water. So then instead of staying as ice, it becomes water and that can drain off to the sides and the roads can be free. Uh, okay. Paper pressure and all is finished. Boiling point the kya nahi na? Okay. Same question as before, but different situation. For this. So 18 grams of glucose is dissolved in one kg of water in a saucepan. At what temperature will the solution boil? Given everything here. What was delta TB ka formula um, with like W1, W2, M1? Same thing. Only difference between KF, TF is the like KF, ah. KF becomes KB, TF becomes TB. T delta T B is T B minus T naught B or T naught B minus T B. It's elevation in boiling points, right? So the T B minus T naught. So we have to subtract what we got from the boiling point given, right? No, you add it to the boiling point. We'll no, we'll subtract it, right? How would you find the elevation then? It's increasing, no? So you have to find TB. So TB minus 373.15 is equal to whatever. Achha, and that will oh. be addition. Achha. No, I get it, what? No? You need to find the boiling point of the solution. So will that be higher than the original boiling point or lower than the original boiling point? Lower. Huh? Lower. Boiling point kya hoga? Will it elevate or will it? So the original would be lower. Original will be lower. Yeah. What are you supposed to find here? 
अच्छा ओ So we need to uh, convert one kg to um, thousand grams. Who the director? Like, huh? get gets your cal makes your calculations. No, like what I asked previously related to the like thousand that we are at putting in the that formula. If you think thousand in the formula, then convert. That's only related to W uh, one, right? Not W two. Yeah, but what is W one? So two is given one kg. You no, know? so do we need to make that into thousand grams? Is thousand? No, 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 no. I have sent. <laughs> Don't see. Is so one? I'm, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Don't consider my answer. Ma'am. Yeah. Do we need to convert or not? You, if you are using thousand in the formula, you need to convert. Otherwise, no. But see, you said that uh, in the formula, it's uh, yeah, it's W two by W one. Uh, you said that the W one we want uh, in kg. So if it's in gram, then we uh, put the thousand in the numerator, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now in this case, W two is given in one kg. So do we need to convert that into thousand? No, W one is one kg. Huh? Adding eighteen grams of glucose in one kg. Oh, of I don't. Huh? Sorry, sorry. So, abhi this, so we don't have to put thousand in it. Direct one. I get confused with the one and two. So that is why, like, what I do is just stick to the basics. No, ma'am, that will be even more complicated. So just say one is solvent, two is solute. This you need to remember that if you're going by that. एडिशन चेक योर डेसिमल प्लेसेस एंड मी The boiling point of this also, ma'am, we can use hundred degree Celsius, right? You can, yeah. But you have been given no boiling point. Here it's given in Kelvin. No, better to stick to Kelvin. But then the answer will remain the same, right? The final answer won't remain the same if you use Celsius and Kelvin. How can you add no, Kelvin? Not the same. I mean, like it will be correct, right? Yeah. We use hundred. Yeah. Is it correct now? Yes, now it is correct. Are you mind I, even remotely close? I have a feeling. Um, instead of multiply, like dividing by ten, you multiply it by ten. Is it is there? We need to find it. T T B right? Yes. So T B minus T not B is equal to delta T B, right? Yes. <laughs> Sanskriti, did you figure out delta T B? Miss. I'm so confused. Do we have to? Don't we have? We don't know what to do with thousand. One kg, है ना? That's why I say stick to basics so that this confusion will not be there. 
it is kb into oh, but... the molality which is in the denominator in the denominator <laughs> there is w1 right so w1 if it's given in grams then you need to put numerator me 1000 agar kg me diya to fir nahi uske na abhi idhar 1 kg diya so you don't use 1000 hang on yeah so it's is my answer right now uh you messed up a decimal place you multiplied by 10 instead of dividing it by 10 okay okay so this is delta db is kb times molality now molality is number of moles of the solute your solute is glucose so that's 18 by 180 divided by mass of the solvent in kg because i have given kg here directly into 1 clear yeah now we just have to solve this so 18 10 times this, this will be 0.052 and multiplied by 1000 why I don't even know. Yeah, that's why more variables you add, the formula gets really confusing. So stick to the basics. It's really simple. You add W one, W two. Then you need to keep in mind. Okay, who is that in grams? Is that in kg? Like all of that complications will be there. संस्कृति क्या हुआ सो नाउ एलिवेशन इन बॉइलिंग पॉइंट है सो बॉइलिंग पॉइंट इंक्रीजेस सो टीबी विल बी इक्वल टू टी नॉट बी डी ओरिजिनल प्लस द डेल्टा टीबी सो Here another place you need to be a little careful. Three seventy three point one five is zero five two. Zero point zero five. Don't put, don't make it six seven. <laughs> be careful when you are adding here. Zero two three seventy three point two zero. I had taken molar mass of water. That's why I took eighteen instead of one eighty. Oh, like okay. That's why it was off by a decimal. Okay. That's why stick to the definitions. Like, for M one, M two, kiska molar mass, solute, solvent, or pura confusion ho gaya tha. Okay. So, like conceptually, I think you guys are there. A little bit of fine tuning in terms of you know when you're solving problems. that comes the more questions you do the better like you will get to see at what places you are making mistakes so you can correct yourself based on that okay um all right the next colligative property so we did lowering of vapor pressure we have elevation in boiling point depression in freezing point and the last one is osmotic pressure How many of you are familiar with osmosis? Bio, I think you would use this quite frequently. No? Yeah, the bio one is wrong. It's wrong. It's not wrong. It's right only. Yeah, it, it's correct, yeah, but it's... the definition is different from what we yeah. wanted. See, we took concentration along. It both are right. Yeah. Okay, it's wrong because it, because we always it. use solute. This in bio, we took the definition in terms of uh the solvent, like the higher concentration of the solvent to lower concentration. Yes, sir. But in chemistry, we generally take in terms of solute, which we didn't know. So the teacher got mad at us for by hurting uh, the apparently wrong definition for our lives. Yeah. Hmm. So you can't just blindly say higher to lower, lower to higher. You need to see higher concentration of the solute or the solvent. 
Okay. And miss, you know, and the thing is that for so long we thought ki this is the definition that when she tried to correct us, nobody believed. We thought ki and uh, the thing is when she tried to explain why it is wrong. I'm pretty sure half of the class didn't understand why they both are the same, but it's just that it depends on if you're talking about solvent or solute concentration. Mm. Okay. Smera so, Sanskriti, I know you guys had it uh, grade nine. Uske baad. Have you ever come across osmosis? Nahi? Okay. Oh. What do you guys remember of it? Kuch nahi to I'll start from scratch, but yeah, what do you guys remember so far? Some of it, very vaguely, like um, the con it was related to concentration, like the movement of water from like lower to higher or something. I don't remember very nicely. Yeah, that's kind of basically it. So let's say, oh, no, no, no. so let's say one side you have uh, this is salt water, and here, let's say you have pure water. If they both are separated by a membrane, so this is not like a wooden wall, this is a semi-permeable membrane. Do you remember what semi-permeable means? Yeah, like selectively permeable. Huh. Okay. So it'll allow some substances to go through it. It won't allow other substances to go through it. So like in, in cases of osmosis, basically semi-permeable membrane allows water the solvent particles to salt uh, to pass through it it will not allow the solute particles to pass through it so semi permeable membrane you select based on what solvent what solute you are using okay um so this selectively allows only solvent particles to pass through it right so just like how diffusion may uh, the thing goes from higher concentration to lower concentration yahan pe bhi where there is excess of solvent, the solvent particle moves from excess solvent to less solvent. But usually you calculate concentration based on your solute, right? So here salt matlab you say greater concentration either. Hai. So if you're considering based on the solute particles, so osmosis is the phenomenon where solvent particles move from a region of lower solute concentration to higher solute concentration. The movement is solvent only. Solvent moves. So how it moves is it moves from lower solute concentration to higher solute concentration. Okay, so like the pure water thing in which this uh, solvent is water that moves into the salt water wala part. Correct. Okay. Sanskriti? Got it? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So from lower solute, like just remember this because the questions and all we deal with solute concentration only, you know, the yeah, molarity, molality, whatever it is. So it goes from lower solute concentration to higher solute concentration. Now, if I put a piston here and apply pressure on salt water, I can stop this movement. So it depends on how much pressure I put here. So the pressure required to stop this movement is called osmotic pressure. Yes, how I, can, I did can not you? understand the how putting pressure stops the movement. I did not understand. See, if um, so, if solvent particles are moving, there should be some sort of a driving force behind that motion, right? So that driving force, like if you're opposing that driving force. So you're like, it is feeling some sort of pressure 
like there's a pressure differential, which is why the solvent particle is moving. So that movement is osmosis. So if you're opposing that, uh, so that pressure required to oppose this motion and stop this motion, so that pressure is called osmotic pressure. And if you put pressure more than the osmotic pressure, you can force the solvent particles to move in the reverse direction also. So when that happens, that phenomenon is called reverse osmosis. Okay. So the natural tendency is to move from lower solute concentration to higher solute concentration. The, so that phenomenon is called osmosis. Osmosis happens naturally, it happens everywhere in nature. So when you're pickling stuff, um, when even in the body, like when nutrition, I don't know, like oxygen diffusion or you know, when nutrient molecules being absorbed, like everywhere osmosis takes place. And um, that's why salt water fish, uh, sea water fish, like, you know, when you change it, it'll either swell up or it'll shrivel up. All of that happens. By applying an external pressure to oppose this motion, you can stop that movement. That point is called osmotic pressure. And if you exceed osmotic pressure, you can force the molecules to go the other way around. So then that becomes reverse osmosis. So reverse osmosis is, so let's talk about osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure is the pressure applied to the solution. So pressure applied to a solution uh, in order to stop osmosis. And reverse osmosis, when the pressure applied to a solution exceeds the osmotic pressure. Miss, how can uh, the osmotic pressure will be present um, like in, in the solution itself because of the concentration difference, right? It's not something that can be applied externally, right? It is present, which is why this motion is taking place. So if you apply the pressure externally, you can like in the opposite direction on the solution itself, then both of them equate equal and opposite forces get balanced and you can stop the osmosis from taking place. No, I didn't understand. How can you apply external pressure on only one side of the solution? Let me... See, how is that practically possible? If you have a beaker, usme beach mein you put a semi-permeable membrane and one side there's sugar solution, one side. You are not applying the pressure. Water. She said you put you apply external pressure. How can you apply external pressure on water? Like if you want pressure? reverse osmosis to take place, yeah, you can do that. But osmotic pressure itself is not external pressure, right? No. So osmotic pressure itself is not external pressure, but if you apply an external pressure to that is numerical magnitude is equal to the osmotic pressure, you can stop osmosis from happening.
okay everywhere theoretically it's just given applying pressure and like piston ka visual only is given i'll see if there's like a youtube video that if if you know there's different colored liquids and where it's visually there i'll share that with you guys but everywhere i see like external like piston wala physical pressure only is there so what is osmotic pressure like if it's not external pressure then so it's that see osmosis happens like osmosis is what movement of the solvent particles right so if solvent particles are moving there should be some sort of a driving force behind them like something that's causing the motion like if a normal physical object is moving as i'm applying force to it and if things are falling you have gravitational force falling on it so yahan pe uh, the pressure that's causing this uh, solvent particles to move that is the osmotic pressure that's present here they're feeling that osmotic pressure so they're moving it in order to make the concentrations equal but osmotic pressure is to stop osmosis right numerically if you want to stop osmosis like if you want to figure out how much osmotic pressure is there just apply the pressure on the solution and then at the point where osmo osmosis stops uh, whatever pressure you apply numerically that will be equal to the osmotic pressure here is that making sense so osmotic pressure is uh theoretically the pressure that is that naturally occurs due to uh forward osmosis but uh numerically it is the one that is used to that's the external pressure to stop osmosis hmm if you want to figure out the osmotic pressure this is the method like you apply an external pressure see where it stops and yeah the pressure at which the osmosis stops is the osmotic pressure okay okay now reverse osmosis when the pressure applied to a solution exceeds the osmotic pressure jo bhi yahan pe kar rahe ho uh if you put it more than the osmotic pressure then the solvent particles ka motion reverse ho jayega so solvent particles start moving move uh from higher solute concentration to lower solute concentration so this process like when that that reverse motion because it's opposite of osmosis it's called reverse osmosis wait so here it's not talking about external pressure osmosis like osmotic pressure this pressure that we are applying is the external pressure so yahan pe jo external pressure apply kar rahe ho if that, that is the osmotic pressure right if that exceeds the osmotic pressure like suppose um, but if osmotic pressure exceeds osmotic pressure that doesn't make sense no it is the random pressure that we are applying so osmotic pressure is one specific value at which uh, you know if you apply it in the reverse direction there is no osmosis if that number is greater you start forcing the solvent particles to move backwards so it's called osmotic pressure when it's equal to the normal osmotic pressure but if it exceeds it's called external pressure it's not a special you can't call it call yeah you can't call it, it osmotic a, yeah it's not os osmotic pressure is a specific value Yeah. 
So numerically, if you have to find what is the osmotic pressure, osmotic pressure is denoted. Can you go by, back? Huh? Like one second. Thank you. So osmotic pressure is represented by pi, Greek alphabet for P, uh, is equal to. Miss, could you show the previous, the last one? Huh. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, once everybody is done, then we'll go. Like, let me know when you're ready. Sia and Arya are done. Smera is done. Okay. Kaveri, Sanskriti, let me know when you finish noting. Mom, I'm done. Done. So osmotic pressure pi is calculated by CRT, where uh, C is the concentration in molarity. So that is number of moles of the solute divided by volume of the solution. R is the universal gas constant, same thing. And T is the temperature in Kelvin. No, miss, may why don't we use molality? Isme, why do we use gas constant? These are the relations. We'll have to go back and look into how these. So, like, why don't we use molality? Isn't that preferred over molality? We can use molality. Again, you'll have to apply the conversion factor and everything. Now, here, I wanted you guys to, I want you guys to observe one thing. So dimension wise, if you see, you guys remember PV equal to NRT? So let me rearrange this. So pressure equal to N by V into RT. Yes. Huh? Uh, if like we said that molality is independent of temperature, uh, here we are taking, like even temperature plays a factor. So why to take molarity if that is getting affected? Wouldn't that change the value of osmotic pressure? Isn't this at room temperature? Yeah. Even if not room temperature, we're doing this at a specific temperature. So if the temperature is changing, of course, T will change related to that concentration is also going to change because volume will change. So then you'll have to apply, like then you'll have like an integrated equation and it's it's going to look completely different. So this is at one specific temperature, at a constant temperature, which whose value you're going to plug over here. Um, which is why like it, it it doesn't matter whether you use molarity, molality. Um, I wanted you guys to see like the parallels between this equation and the uh, gas equation, ideal gas equation. IV would be the same as P. No. No, pi V would be the same as a PV. Yeah, equal to NRT. Concentration is number of moles per uh, unit volume of the solution. Here also, this is number of moles per volume. And then you have RT. Okay, so dimensionally, this is the relation. 
Ma'am, can we take so a break? Pi is similar to pressure and C is N by V, right? Yeah. Pi is, here it is osmotic pressure, here it is pressure exerted by the gas. Dimensionally, they're very like similar equations, just that the values and the context where you're using is changing. This is in the case of like a, this is a gas equation. This is for uh, a solution, like osmotic pressure of the solution. The pressure exerted by the solution. All right. Uh, this is the main thing when it comes to. Uh, hmm? Can we take a break? Uh, okay, go through this. I but like I want to do a couple of questions related to this. Iske baad bahut sara theory hai. Aur kitna baaki hai? This is the last thing. Apart from that, we have something called Van't Hoff factor. That's basically it. It's the end of the chapter. Five, four minutes, five minutes. Okay, 456, okay, let's, let's meet back at five o'clock. Yeah. Okay. So all these colligator properties, we were doing it to figure out what is the molar mass of the solute. So usually, especially in the case of ionic solutes, what happened is the calculated molar mass, like the experiment value of molar mass is turned out to be very different from what the actual is. Okay, Like if you know that you're using NaCl, you'd expect to get a certain value, but that's not what you ended up getting experimentally. Can any of you guys figure out why this difference came up? Keep in mind that all of these colligative properties, matlab, they depend on the number of particles. So think of why there's a difference between experimental and theoretical values. So the calculated values were different from the normal regular values. Why was this the case? Any ideas? No ideas? Uh, like I mentioned, this was mainly seen for ionic solute. That's another hint. Think of what happens. Does it have anything to do with dipole or something? Not dipole. What oh. happens when you put ionic compounds in water? They dissolve because they are polar. Dissolve, yes. Dissolution may get ionize. Ionize. So this ionizes into Na plus ions and Cl minus ions. So technically, like in reality. What happened to the number of particles in the solution? Ionize hone ke baad. So if I dissolve, say, one mole of NaCl, technically, how many moles of particles do I have in solution? Adla? That one mole will split into Na plus and Cl minus one. Right. I took one mole of NaCl. Okay. But this one mole of NaCl won't remain as one mole of NaCl, right? It is splitting into Na plus and Cl minus. 
इसका मतलब इफ आई इफ आई लुक लाइक डोंट थिंक ऑफ व्हाट पार्टिकल्स आई हैव प्योरली लुक एट द नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स व्हाट एवर इट मे बी व्हाट इज द नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स आई एंड अप विद इन द सॉल्यूशन so one mole of nacl will give me how many na plus ions one 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 mole and how many cl minus ions one matlab technically if i have like water and i added one mole of nacl how many individual particles do i have total twice the amount twice the amount so the number of particles has become two moles one mole of na plus and one mole of cl minus now colligative properties depend purely on the number of particles na so if you are taking one mole into consideration in your calculations that is not correct because the number of particles technically is Two moles. So all your calculation, you need to modify it based on kya ho raha hai actually solution mein. This is one example, just me ions are dissociating into individual, like yeah. So ionic salts are dissociating into individual ions. So there's a reverse case also, just me association takes place. What are we doing, though? Like, what is this? Hmm? So this is related to Van der Waals factor. Like, what is Van der Waals factor? Like, why is it coming into picture? So, okay. So, like, I don't know what you're noting this down right now, but I'll tell you like what happened. Okay. So this is an example where dissociation is taking place. Similarly, association also may take place. so if there is association or dissociation so dissociation to you familiar with ionize dissoc like ions like salts dissociate into ions nacl splits into na plus cl minus if you have mgcl2 then you have like thrice the number of particles because you have mg plus and twice the cl minus ions association also takes place so for example um so if you dissolve acetic acid in benzene okay so this causes something called dimerization so do you guys remember the structure of acetic acid yes c c o h yes c h 3 c double bond o and then you have sp2 hybridization right s i o h so there's another yahan pe uh, h so two molecules of acetic acid they kind of join together through hydrogen bonding now because two of them are clumping together they are associating call that association so generally depending on what substances you use there may be association there may be dissociation in a lot of cases none of this will also take place like if you dissolve sugar in water sugar is not going to associate or it's not going to dissociate it to ions in that case there's no change but if you observe that there is association or dissociation this is an example of association dissociation is that thing that we saw nacl dissociates into na plus and cl minus ions the overall number of particles changes in the solution 
so dissociation may be getting more number of particles and association may be getting less number of particles like if i add one mole of acetic acid because two of them are joining together to form a single particle i'm getting half the number of particles I'm, technically my concentration is just half the number. so when this happens um then the number of particles changes so basically there is a difference in the calculated values of molar mass or the colligative properties in general so your concentration itself is changing so your experimental values will not match your expected like theoretical values so so in order to you know like figure out okay why is this error occurring so uh, you introduce something called van't hoff factor so van't hoff is that i wala thing right this is that i wala thing right yes so van't hoff factor is represented by i so just including i in your calculations will uh, correct for any association or dissociation so technically i is equal to the uh, the actual or normal molar mass of the solute divided by the observed or calculated molar mass of the solute yeah so if you want to get the correct values uh, if you want to include the van't hoff factor in your calculation this is how your formulas are going to change the first thing lowering of vapor pressure so delta p upon p not delta p1 upon p0 1 will be equal to i into x2 um delta t b or f depending on boiling or this thing will change as i into the kb or f times molality and osmotic pressure will be by equal to i into crt um suppose you do how do we know when to use i and when to not use i so if like when you look at the solvent uh, sorry you look at the solute so if you know that the solute like complete ionization takes place or ionic salt is given then you know that okay like the number of particles is not going to remain the same it's going to dissociate into ions so i need to get i into the picture but if you given solute like urea or sugar in water like where this does not take place and you don't have to bring in i i will basically be equal to 1 because it will be the same value normal and calculated uh, in the question will be mentioned like okay so this particular substance is dimerizing or polymerizing or it, sometimes it may be given so it will always be mentioned when Yeah. Like if it's us showing association or dissociation. Yeah. So how? But like, how do we uh, different? I mean, if it's dissociation, then I value will differ in what way? Or basically, yeah. how do we categorize by looking at I value if it is associated? Yeah. Or so we'll come to that. So once you've finished noting this, I'll we'll talk about the significance of I value. Looking at I value, what you can figure. Uh, Kaveri, Sia, and Sanskriti, you guys there? Yeah. 
My brain is like saturated. See, this is nothing new. Just that whatever you have learned so far, these are the formulas that you've used. Usko thoda modify kar rahe. See, so that's what we discussed. Is abka ho gaya na? All right. If there is dissociation. What is happening to the number of particles? Is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. 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 increasing right. So when the number of particles is increasing, the value of i will be greater than one. So, for example, if we have NaCl dissociates into Na plus and Cl minus, uh, if I take n particles of nacl so after dissociation total kitne particles hai mere paas is this is something you've done like grade 11 so you've been doing stoichiometry if i take n when to n huh so Basically, the number of particles is doubling. So in this case, the value of i, the Van't Hoff factor, will be equal to two. Okay. So similarly, if I take MgCl2, can you guys tell me what is the Van't Hoff factor in this case? Two n three. Okay. Two n three. You need to see by how much are the number of particles increasing. So MgCl2 splits into what, Kaveri? Mg and Cl2. Kitne Mg and kitne Cl2? Two plus, um, yeah, Cl minus. It was balanced. Two Cl minus. Ah, every MgCl2 is going to give you one Mg and two of Cl, na? So total kitne particles hoge idhar? Three. Three. So I that's how you figure out i kitne particles are there. Uh, similarly if there is association then i will be less than 1 same thing it's it's basically the proportion like by how much is it increasing or decreasing agar dimerize ho raha like in the case of acetic acid then i will be equal to 1 by 2 So for dimerization, so I will be one by two because two of them are joining into one. So like the total number of particles is getting half. Uh, if it is trimerization, if three of them are joining together to form one club, then I will be. So another way to figure out what the uh, factor is, huh? How much more of this chapter? This was the last part. Yeah. Okay. So another way of uh, like another use is if you want to figure out what the Van't Hoff factor is, you just compare the like if you don't know what solute is used or like. If you know the solute, but you don't know how much of it is dissociated, how much of it is associated, kya ho hai solution mein, then you figure out, like you calculate it, you calculate the uh, molar mass based on the colligative property. Then because you know the solute, you know what is the expected, like theoretical value. You compare both and then see. Agar I ka value greater than one hai, then you can say that, okay, dissociation is happening. If I is less than one, you can say that a child if association is happening that way. Okay, so this is the thing. And then extension of this thing, like yaha pe 
if all the NaCl particles are dissociating into Na plus and Cl minus, it becomes pura 2N. What if it is not dissociating completely? So if there is a degree of dissociation, like there's another relation with degree of dissociation, so, or degree of association. Let's take degree of dissociation first. So degree of dissociation alpha is equal to I minus one by N minus one. So, yahape I is the calculated quantum factor, and N is the uh, theoretical value. So in such question, they'll give the calculated one, right? We'll do, I'll do one more question so that like context, like where and how to use it. Also in this case, we have to use alpha instead of I. No, like it depends on the question, like what you're finding out and what values are given. So we'll do some example problems. Alpha is the degree of dissociation, right? So I basically relates to the total number of particles. So there are different things here. So let me know once you guys have finished this, I'll do one question with you guys using Vantor factor, using degree of dissociation, like all of these concepts will be used. So. After this, could you go back one second to the uh, previous one? Oh. Yes, but when we use I like in CRT, um, that I is theoretical, in, right? Yeah. Theoretical, but if you know that pura dissociate nahi ho hai, then that I will be modified. So then you do one plus alpha and use that number. Okay, Sapta Hogya, Arya, Sanskriti. Yes. Okay. okay. All right, Smera, see ya. She's sleeping. Yeah, done. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Tia, are you up? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Take this step by step. Uh, okay. 
So a 0.5% aqueous solution of KCl was found to freeze at 0, minus 0 0.24 degrees Celsius. So let's see what all are given. So the concentration is given is 0.5%. Matlab, uh, 0 0.5 grams of KCl is dissolved in 100 grams of water. You can take it to be like that. Okay. Uh, it was found to freeze at, so ISCA TF is minus 0 0.24 degrees Celsius. So can you guys figure out what is the depression in freezing point? Zero point two four. Zero point two four. Okay. Calculate the Van't Hoff factor. Matlab, we need to figure out what is I and the degree of dissociation. So we don't know the alpha also of the solute. And at zero point two four. Depression in freezing point ka vary. Aqueous solution hai. So water ka actual freezing point kya hai? Hmm? Huh? What? So this is an aqueous zero. zero. Huh. Like in revised freezing point is minus 0 0.24. Matlab, how, by how much has it reduced? How did 0 0.22? Two kidder say aya. What did she say? Sorry. Read what is there on the screen. No, I'm writing everything that we're discussing. Delta TF is the change in uh, freezing point and so minus uh minus zero point two four. What is the freezing point of water? Zero. Zero degrees Celsius. What is the revised freezing point? Minus zero. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I saw the delta TF as the uh, freezing point. Sorry. This is all simple stuff. You just have to pay a little attention. Okay. Take it. So first step, okay, we have our KF, we have our concentration, we have delta TF. So we can use the formula delta TF is equal to I into KF into molality to figure out I. Yes, no. Yeah. Okay. So put the values, put the values carefully. This is molality, so be careful with that. Uh, so 0 0.24 will be equal to I into KF we know as to molality. So we mixed 0 0.5 grams of KCL in 100 grams of water. So can you figure out the molality from that information? 0 0.5 upon 0 0.5 plus 200. 200. Right? Oh, no, 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 sorry. What is molar mass of uh, potassium? Uh, 39. 39. 35.5. 35.5. 200 grams of water, we need to convert that to kg. Okay, so from this, tell me what is the value of I that you got. You can use a calculator, it will be quicker.
तो आइडियली वो फैक्टर क्या होना चाहिए इफ के सी एल कम्प्लीटली डिसोसिएट्स they should be so twice two times number, two times hona chahiye na but it's not two it's slightly less than two which means kcl pura dissociate nahi partial dissociation correct partial dissociation hai so that's where your degree of dissociation comes into picture okay so ideally uh so like if so let's say you have one zero zero initially if alpha amount dissociates uh, you get alpha over here you get alpha over here which means the total number of particles that you'll be left with would be one minus alpha and alpha and then alpha wait why is it alpha everywhere cuz alpha amount is dissociating this is the change so this is reducing by 1 into alpha amount this is increasing it's from that previous chapter no what we did yeah equilibrium how did you know it's partial kyunki two nahi hai na this is not exactly double na because also they have told degree of dissociation and like make sense of it that way yeah uh so total number of particles kitna like how much what is the total number of particles at equilibrium this will be equal to 1 minus alpha plus alpha plus alpha you just adding 1 minus alpha of kcl is there and then alpha amount of k plus is there and alpha amount of cl minus is there so just add them all up we get what is the 1 plus alpha yeah ha huh? nothing at all same 1 plus alpha yeah. so basically 1.92 is equal to 1 plus alpha which means degree of dissociation is 0.92 that's 92% ma'am we can also take it from the formula you gave right i minus 1 upon n minus 1 Oh yeah, you can. Well, n will be two two because two is the ideal thing, and I what we got. Yeah. Okay, so so the, one minus alpha part that line, the third line, that is at equilibrium. Yeah. Or at equilibrium, like finally, like what is there in the solution? This much would be there. Arya, Sanskriti making sense? Little bit. So this is the context. Like this is kind of how you use matter of factor. Like it relates to the number of particles. Like you modify the concentration to reflect that. What's the significance of writing plus alpha plus alpha and then minus alpha for? Just to explain, like change कैसे हुआ? Uh, alpha amount dissociate हो गया मतलब this reduced by alpha, so I put minus alpha. उतना dissociate हुआ मतलब these many ions are produced, so I put plus alpha and plus alpha. Is this the last? Miss, if you didn't. Uh... So sorry, you added one plus alpha minus alpha, so you got one minus alpha at equilibrium, and you added zero plus alpha, so alpha. That's how you got. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
so these are all the concepts what's left is for you guys to do the questions and practice so what what is n here kaha pe calculated one na there is i and there is n acha so n is like the you can say the ideal case like observed value yaha pe like if it is complete dissociation i should get twice the number of particles but that did not happen so there is so n is 2 mm. in the actual formula kaveri so i mentioned right so alpha equal to i minus 1 by n minus 1 so we know there is an alpha because n is not equal to i yeah If n equal to i, alpha is one. That's basically hundred percent. It won't dissociate, na? Then associate or dissociate? No, 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 no. If Different. So, so that is for specifically for degree of dissociation. Let's switch this real quick. यहाँ पे if i and n are equal. Yeah. तो फिर alpha is one. Yeah. So i minus one by i minus one हो जाएगा. So cancel होके equal to one. मतलब alpha equal to one मतलब complete dissociation, one hundred percent dissociate. हाँ. अच्छा. That way. Is this like the same for um, association if it becomes minus one? No, association is slightly different. That's why I put it here specifically. So degree of association. So again, alpha will be equal to. Uh, यहाँ पे one minus. Yes, I have a silly question, but in case of you gave an example, कि sugar उसमें तो ionization नहीं होता है. So in that, it's only dissolving. Yeah. Like we say that. So मतलब so, what is happening in that case? In so that case, there's no I or anything. So yeah. There's no dissociation. There's no association. So what is? Yeah. If dissociation is happening or association is happening, the number of particles changes, right? So that change yeah. number of particles is not there. So you like your calculated value, like when you apply these formula, uh, hmm. if you take it by the amount you dissolved, whatever is the expected value, calculate करके उतना ही आएगा. तो मतलब उधर I है पर वो one है. Yes. So I is one. Ah, uh, if it is greater than one, it means the number of particles is increasing. So dissociation more. If it is less than one, number of particles is decreasing. So association more. That's the deal. case of association. Slight difference will be one minus I by one minus one by n. Actually, this could be we can just ah uh, we writing n minus one because number of particles is increasing. यहाँ पे एसोसिएट हो रहा है ना सो इफ टू आर जॉइनिंग इन टू वन सो विल बी वन बाई टू इफ द डिग्री ऑफ एसोसिएशन इज नॉट इफ इट्स ऑल द पार्टिकल्स आर नॉट एसोसिएटिंग देन दिस इज हाउ इट इज मॉडिफाइड बट क्वेश्चंस वाइज यू लाइक यू see a lot more dissociation than association you might have one or two idhar udhar but mainly dissociation hi zyada okay so that brings us to the end of this chapter Uh, start doing the questions and let me know on the group if you want another session purely for practicing more numericals or if we should start with alcohols we not okay but that we can decide only once you guys like sit and do the questions see how you are able to get them okay sanskriti siya smara kaveri yes ma'am Yes, ma'am. So let me know before the next class. Like, let me know tomorrow evening. 
what or monday morning what you want to do uh, start new chapter or should we do this more questions from this